Public Power District has a relatively new name in the Cornhusker State. But its ancestry dates back to 1933 when the Nebraska legislature passed the Public Power and Irrigation District Enabling Act. The NPPD, as the utility is commonly known, came into existence officially on January 1, 1970, as a result of the merger bringing together three existing power districts to form the state's largest power district, whose chartered territory includes 85 from Nebraska's 93 counties and portions of two others. The newly created district combined about $392 million of generation, transmission, distribution, and irrigation properties, and now the district's properties are valued at more than one and one-half billion dollars. Employees were merged under one board of directors and now total nearly 2,000. Nebraska is unique in that it is the only wholly public power state in the union. And the 11-member board of directors of NPPD are elected by the public from director subdivisions that encompass the district's chartered territory. Day-to-day -day management of the district is vested in a general manager, deputy general manager, assistant general managers, and an executive staff that includes directors of the organization's various divisions and departments. NPPD has a veteran management staff headed by General Manager D.W. Hill, who has held that title since 1964. Hill came to Nebraska after having served as head of a public utility in the state of Washington. Deputy General Manager Don Schaffelberger has been with NPPD and its predecessor utilities since 1949. NPPD is a growing utility with dedicated people. There are hundreds of employees who have more than 20 years with the district, and several are in the 40-year range. Retail and wholesale electric facilities across the state are operated out of four regional offices at Norfolk, Scotts Bluff, Kearney, and York that are assigned specific territorial responsibilities. The district maintains offices in nearly 50 communities across the state. The two interrelated functions of hydroelectric generation and irrigation are headquartered in the North Platte Regional Office. The hydraulic division consists of two diversion dams, 62 miles of large canals, and a hydropower plant. The irrigation division is made up of three diversion dams and about 500 miles of canals and laterals. Approximately 41,000 acres of land in the Platte River Valley receive water from the canals. Located at York, near the district's load center, is an impressive complex that covers 158,000 square feet under roof and thousands of more square feet of paved and outdoor storage. The decision to centralize an operation center at York was based on economics and service, and the facility was completed in 1975. Headquartered at the operation center are such departments as communications, transportation, operations, substation, transmission, stores, material, and warehouse. In addition, substation, transmission, and communication personnel are located at Kearney, North Platte, Hastings, Ogallala, Norfolk, and Lincoln. And these six sites are an integral part of the strategic plan for economy and service. At the district's control center in Hastings, dispatchers have the responsibility of controlling the generation in the service area so that the energy requirements of the users are continuously being supplied by the resources of the district at the minimum possible cost. In total, NPPD has personnel located in nearly 80 towns and cities in the state, maintaining the transmission and distribution systems. In addition, there are personnel at 18 power plant facilities throughout the state, and the district maintains a staff of more than 500 employees at its Columbus General Office. The three-level general office, occupied in December of 1976, 
brought together personnel that had previously been located in four buildings in downtown Columbus. As with all utilities, the general office houses the normal centralized functions. The Generation Engineering and Construction Division is charged with overall design and construction of the power generation facilities. Design of sub-transmission and transmission lines and substations and the management of the construction of these facilities is the primary responsibility of the Transmission and Distribution Engineering Division. The planning department plans and designs systems and determines when major capital additions should be made in the transmission and generation facilities to provide for customers' needs. NPPD competes in the public sector on the issuance of revenue bonds, which, together with electric system revenue, finances major construction projects. Overseeing district finances is a primary function of the Treasury Department. Operation of the large power plants is the responsibility of the power supply department. An environmental division provides advice and technical studies to management and other personnel on environmental issues. Within the broad activities of the various business and financial divisions, accountants accumulate pertinent information from throughout the district, which is compiled into various reports to provide management the tools necessary to make sound business decisions. Purchasing department secures materials, supplies, machinery, and equipment at the best overall competitive cost consistent with delivery requirements, specifications, and quality. The function of the energy applications department is to research, develop, and implement the necessary programs which will result in the efficient utilization of the electric facilities, including peak reduction and energy conservation. Area development people strive to improve the livability and attractiveness of NPPD communities and attract industry to the state. A customer relations department works with the district's wholesale and retail customers. And a primary function of the public affairs department is keeping Nebraskans informed about the operations of their power district. In addition to the normal utility functions, the general office also houses important support functions such as an expanding computer services department to take advantage of the time and money saving techniques available with this modern system of planning, accounting, and record keeping. A fully staffed training department geared to the needs of field personnel as well as top and middle management people. An active safety department that has guided employees to an accident frequency rate far below the national average for electric utilities. Public power has been beneficial to Nebraska in a number of ways, not the least of which is the rate structure. The electric rate paid by Nebraskans consistently rank among the lowest in the nation. In fact, a recent nationwide rate survey revealed that rates paid by a typical MPPD retail customer were in the lower one-third of the 100 cities and towns surveyed. MPPD's transmission facility is the backbone of the electrical system, serving approximately 760,000 Nebraskans, and the district serves customers at both wholesale and retail. There are more than 350 cities, towns, rural, and other power districts in the state that rely totally or partially on NPPD for electricity. There are about 7,000 miles of transmission lines that make up the system. During a recent year, the district began or completed construction on an estimated $72 million in high voltage transmission lines and approximately $37.5 million in associated substation projects. The largest single transmission project ever undertaken by NPPD was the building of approximately 330 miles of 345,000 volt lines in western and central Nebraska. In a six-year period ending in 1985, the district is constructing an additional 1,584 miles of high voltage lines to continue reliable service to the growing needs of its customers. Long 
long-term lease agreement are in effect with 225 cities and towns under which NTPD leases and operates the electrical distribution system owned by the community. Due to the dwindling supply of natural gas available for power generation and the need to switch to more costly oil, the district developed an agreement as a way to offer municipalities an alternative to continued high-cost power production. These agreements provide for NPPD to purchase the capacity of the municipality's diesel or steam electric facilities for use as needed. And in turn, the municipality will purchase from the district all or a portion of its electric requirements. In addition, the district has wholesale power agreements for total or partial requirements with more than 70 municipalities, and there are 26 power districts and rural cooperatives that obtain their total firm requirements, either directly or indirectly, from NTPD. To meet its power generation requirements, NTPD owns or exercises control over a variety of facilities within the state, providing an economical and efficient mix of fuel sources. Included are the output of a nuclear plant, fossil steam plants of varying capacities, utilizing coal, natural gas, or oil, hydro facilities, diesel engine plants, and combustion peaking turbines. The balance of the power requirements needed to supply the grid system is purchased under firm contract from the Western Area Power Administration or other sources. NPPD is a member of the Mid-Continent Area Power Pool, which is an organization of electric utilities in an eight-state area that are interconnected by an extensive network of high-voltage transmission facilities. In 1979, approximately 38% of the district's energy requirements were from coal, 23% from nuclear, 7% from hydro, and 5% from gas or oil which left approximately 27% to be purchased from a variety of other sources. By 1983, as the demand for electricity continues to increase, the district expects to generate approximately 62% of its needs from coal, 18% from nuclear, 7% from hydro, and only 1% from gas or oil leaving about 12% of the requirements to be purchased from other sources. The decrease in purchases is due to the dwindling supply and high cost of energy from outside the state borders. Gerald Gentleman Station Unit Number 1, a 650,000 kilowatt coal-fired plant on Sullivan Reservoir in West Central Nebraska, began commercial operation in 1979. Ground was broken and construction began during 1977 on Gentleman Station Unit Number 2, also a 650,000 kilowatt coal-fired plant that will be supplying power in the early 1980s. Gentleman Station is Nebraska's largest fossil fuel generating facility. And since it is NTPD's first major generating plant outside of eastern Nebraska, it gives the district's grid system greater stability. Low sulfur coal from Wyoming is used as fuel, and some 800 tons of coal will be burned per hour when both units are operating at full capacity. The coal is transported to the site from a coal mine near Gillette, Wyoming. Wyoming coal is used because it is low in sulfur content and thus greatly reduces discharges of sulfur dioxide gases to meet air quality standards. Environmental features of the plant include such items as electrostatic precipitators, a sewage treatment plant, a wastewater evaporator pond, coal storage runoff pond, special boiler design, additional chimney height, and certain aspects of the cooling system. Water for plant use is borrowed from Sullivan Reservoir and then is cooled through a canal system before it is returned to the reservoir. 
Unit number one was built at a cost of approximately $340 million. And the estimated cost of unit number two is $360 million. Construction of two nearly identical units at the same site has many advantages, not the least of which is a lesser number of personnel needed for operation and supportive functions. Other advantages include cost savings associated with a common coal storage area, one railroad car dumper and stacker, less trackage, identical water supply, a common ash storage area, and the need for less land. Two other coal-fired plants the district owns are Sheldon Station, a 225,000 kilowatt facility near Hallam, and Kramer Station, a 113,000 kilowatt facility at Bellevue. Kramer Station was completed in 1949 at a cost of $19.5 million. At full capacity, the plant consumes approximately 1,400 tons of coal per day. And this is also low sulfur western coal that minimizes sulfur dioxide emission. During full summer load, 144,000 gallons of water per minute are borrowed from the Missouri River to flow through the condenser. A reverse flow fabric filter system, more commonly known as a baghouse system, removes particulate from emission gases at Kramer Station. The baghouse is capable of removing more than 99% of the particulate. And the district has received a variety of environmental awards for its efforts at that plant. Kramer Station is one of the largest generating plants in the nation, burning low sulfur coal, to install the baghouse system. And the performance of that system is of interest to the Electric Power Research Institute as an industry precedent. There is also equipment to meet environmental regulations on the chemical content of the water discharged into the river. Total cost for the air and water pollution control equipment is estimated at more than $20 million, which is more than the original cost of the plant. Construction of Sheldon Station began in 1958 first as a combined nuclear and conventional facility. It was the pioneer sodium graphite nuclear power plant in the nation. The nuclear portion of the plant went into operation in 1963, but it was ordered decommissioned by the former Atomic Energy Commission in 1964 after that agency said it had gathered all the information it needed about the sodium graphite plant. In addition to the nuclear portion of the plant, Sheldon Station produced electricity for the Nebraska transmission system since 1961 from a conventional coal and gas-fired boiler. In 1968, the conversion from a nuclear facility to a complete fossil plant was finished, and the plant was operating at full capacity with two conventional power-generating units. The water supply comes from deep wells, and the discharge of water from the plant is carefully controlled to assure that it is not detrimental to the environment. Cooling towers are used to dissipate the waste heat from the steam condenser, thus permitting the water to be recycled. Sheldon Station was completed at a construction cost of $38 million and consumes approximately 2,600 tons of coal per day at full capacity. Major modifications were completed at a cost of $4.2 million to accommodate switching the facility from using natural gas as a primary fuel to low sulfur coal. In addition, the installation of electrostatic precipitators to bring the facility into compliance with clean air requirements resulting in an expenditure of some $12.2 million. Installation of equipment to meet regulations on the chemical content of the water discharge at a price tag of some $7 million.
Three miles south of historic Brownville, Nebraska, a massive structure is situated on a 1,351-acre site on the west bank of the Missouri River. Cooper Nuclear Station is the largest power plant in Nebraska and one of the largest nuclear plants between the Mississippi River and the West Coast. Its 800,000 kilowatt generating capacity significantly strengthens the power supply throughout the state and the Midwest. Earth work on the plant site began in 1968 and Cooper Station began commercial operation in July of 1974. The total cost of constructing the plant, including the extra high voltage transmission lines and cost of financing, was approximately $400 million. Cooper Station uses a boiling water reactor, and there are 548 nuclear fuel assemblies, consisting of 26,852 individual fuel rods. The control room is the nerve center of Cooper Station, where a myriad of dials, switches, meters, and recorders perform a multitude of functions that ensure the safe operation of this finely tuned machine. The intake structure takes water out of the river at the rate of 600,000 gallons per minute. The water is used for cooling the condenser and then returned to the river. In 1977, and again in 1978, Cooper Station was the best operating boiling water reactor generating facility in the nation in terms of availability. It generated electricity at a per kilowatt hour cost less than the national average for nuclear plants. Cooper operated above the national average in both the percentage of capacity it was able to reach while operating and the percentage of time it was available to generate. As the demand for electricity continues to increase for agriculture, business, industry, and residential living, we must have available future sources to supply that demand. We are moving ahead with power supply planning that will consider a variety of options to meet future load growth requirements. The district is continuing to study and evaluate the feasibility and economics of various power supply resources, including base load or intermediate load coal-fired plants. Like the 650,000 kilowatt coal-fired plant in eastern Custer County, scheduled to be operational in 1986. Also being planned is a transmission line to be used for seasonal power interchanges with Manitoba Hydro in Canada and other utilities. Under study is additional nuclear generation, a pump storage hydro project in Boyd County, and short and long-term unit participation power purchases from other utilities. NPPD has an important tradition to uphold, that of providing the necessary electrical energy to its customers at the lowest possible cost, consistent with sound business practice. Meeting Nebraska's energy needs for the foreseeable future is a problem of the first magnitude, a challenge that all of us at NPPD accept. We are dedicated to meeting that challenge.